Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our circuit service. Thank you for joining us this morning. And our today's theme is learning from Jesus. And we start the service with a hymn. I want to walk with Jesus Christ all the days I live of this life on earth. Shall we sing? Christ all the days I live of this life on earth to give to him complete control of body and of soul follow him follow him yield your life to him he has conquered death he is king of kings accept the joy which he gives to those who yield their lives to him I want to learn to speak joy will then be mine. Follow him, follow him, yield your life to him. He has conquered death, he is king of kings. Accept the joy which he gives to those who yield their lives to him. I want to learn to speak of him. My life must show that he lives in me. My deeds, my thoughts, my words must speak of all his love for me. Follow him, follow him, yield your life to him. He has conquered death, he is king of kings. Accept the joy which he gives to those who yield their lives to him. I want to learn to read his word for this is how I know. Let us pray. Lord, we come before you today in prayer. We read of your mighty acts in your book. We read of the way you led the people to the promised land, the way you led the apostles in the New Testament. You were with these people as they journeyed physically and spiritually. Lord, be with us as we approach a new year in Methodism. We are your travelling people, encountering new things, experiencing you at a deeper level. We thank you for the year ahead with all the opportunities we have. Help us to acknowledge you in all this, to know that you sustain us, equip us and give us the resources we need to serve you. We thank you that you have brought us to where we are today. Help us to be content in this place. We are sorry, Lord, when we have said things and done things which have hurt other people. When we have not followed your example of service and wanted others to serve us. Amen. And now let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
And now I'd like to ask Ted to read from Mark chapter 7, starting at verse 1. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were unclean, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the traditions of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pitchers and kettles. So the Pharisees and the teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with unclean hands? Jesus replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are from far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. You go and let go of the commands of God and holding on to the traditions of men. And then continuing from verse 14, and again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, it is what comes out of a man that makes him unclean. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, the disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull, he asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? For it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach, and then out of his body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. May God add a blessing to that passage of his truth. Amen. Thank you, Ted. Our next hymn is hymn, Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Shall we sing? Till then 
in my early teens a group of us from church went carol singing around the neighborhood it had been snowing that day and there was a thick layer of snow on the ground it was a lovely crisp evening in december and as we walked from one place to another some of the youngsters started throwing snowballs one of the stewards turned round and shouted stop throwing snowballs You've not here to enjoy yourself. Of course, I thought, well, actually, that's why we have come. Not to throw snowballs, but to enjoy ourselves singing carols, going round to the people's houses and uh, hopefully lifting their spirits. Sadly, church can be like this. We do things out of a sense of duty and we miss the fun and enjoyment church is supposed to be. When we were in Derby, the Catholic priest I had been working with for nearly five years had to move on. We went to his leaving do and a member of his congregation read out some of the cards that the children had sent him. I can remember a message in one of the cards that read, I hope you have fun in your new place. I don't know how old the child was that wrote it, but he certainly had the impression that being with Father Paul was fun. Now when I pray for Father Paul, I always pray that he will have fun. When I was a youth worker in Kirby, I worked for a little church on a house in a state and it was so small that they, the front door led into a small entranceway and then it led straight into the church worship area. And so some of the youngsters would open the front door and shout in as loud as they could just to try and disrupt the service. Well, this happened three Sundays in a row. And on the third Sunday, it was actually at the end of the service. And the steward ran out chasing these lads and he was shaking his fist and saying, when I catch you, I'm gonna break your necks. Well, I came out of the building at that point and I was looking at this scene and I thought to myself, this is going to make my job a little harder getting these youngsters into church. Of course we want order and not chaos when we're in church but I'm sure God has witnessed a lot worse than snowball fights and children trying to disturb a service. I think we take ourselves far too seriously and that includes me. Soon we will have Back to Church Sunday. Are we wanting to welcome newcomers into our church, into a sombre atmosphere where nothing is said or done out of place? Would any of us really want to worship in that kind of church? I imagine people coming into church for the first time or for a long time would appreciate a few mistakes and some fun and laughter. The story we are looking at today is that of Jesus discussing with the Pharisees about their rules and rituals. 
the Pharisees ask a question of Jesus about the action of his disciples. Jesus' followers are seen eating bread without first ritually washing their hands, a rule which the Pharisees adhere to, but not all Jews did. The Pharisees are trying to influence people to keep the strict rules which they follow. The disciples and the Pharisees are living completely different lives, even though both groups want to please God. Jesus points out that we need to distinguish between man-made rules and the commands of God. The Pharisees were so focused on their own rules, they sometimes ended up being in conflict with God's commands. It was the letter of the Lord that was important to them, the Pharisees. But for Jesus, it was the spirit of the law which brought out his father's true meaning. The disciples were hungry and they ate bread. How can anybody be critical of their actions? I imagine that it would have been far more fun to be in Jesus' group than with the Pharisees. Of course, Jesus was teaching his disciples. He was preparing them for an unbelievable task and he knew that they would not be ready. He knew they would let him down and yet he persisted with them. He loved them. He knew their imperfections, but he also knew they had tremendous potential. If he chided them, it was because he wanted them to be ready when he left them. Jesus wasn't trying to teach them about the scriptures. They would have done that training as youngsters. He was trying to teach them about how to interpret the law with the emphasis on love. The disciples had the privilege of seeing their teacher in action for nearly three years. The memory of what he did and said would be fresh in their minds. Perhaps later on, they didn't always agree on the details, but they did agree on Jesus' emphasis of love. The world was transformed by love, God's love, which shone through his followers. Of course, you have to have rules and regulations. Paul himself said that we needed order in our services. We need a structure to live our lives and worship God. But the structure must be imbued by love. It must be a living and breathing thing, which is the body of Christ. And that means it develops and changes over time to adapt to a changing world. The Pharisees were stuck in time. They were not willing to change because they were entrenched in their beliefs. When this new teacher came on the scene with his unruly disciples, the Pharisees didn't like it because he was not like one of them and they were not willing to be open to the new ideas. Do we embrace new people who come into our church and allow them to change us? To accept them for who they are and to see what gifts and abilities they have. As a church, we represent the body of Christ, and that means we can all play our part. We should appreciate the gifts people have and encourage them to use them. We serve God together, and the more united we are, the stronger we are in our witness to our community. And also, we will support each other. When one of us suffers, it is felt by the whole congregation. And when one of us celebrates, the ripples go through the whole congregation. We are in this together. If we can become petty about rules and regulations, it eats away at the harmony within the group. If we want our own way all the time, it brings division within the church. 
Jesus showed us the way to live our lives as Christians, and a fair proportion of his teaching was about how we get on with each other, how we serve one another. There is no perfect church, but there are churches where Christians are humbly serving each other and serving their community, using their God-given gifts to the full to help those in need in the church and the area. A church where the congregation is reflecting the life of Christ is a church which people want to join because they know they will not be judged but accepted for who they are. It will also be a growing church where people are challenged in all kinds of ways. I would also like to think it is a place of laughter and fun. A life itself is hard enough and when we come into God's house we want to encounter his love, joy and peace. We know what it is like to be among people who laugh and love and give us assurance. How much more then will it be like when we come into God's presence in his special place? Amen. And so we sing the hymn, Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided us. Shall we sing?
let us pray. Lord, as we think about the world we live in, we pray for all the countries which are still struggling to contain the coronavirus. We ask that these countries will be given the resources they need to combat the disease. We also pray for the situation in Afghanistan. We ask that those who are able to leave will be allowed out of the country. We especially pray for the safety of Christians who face persecution because of their faith. We pray for Haiti, which has recently suffered an earthquake. We ask that you will help those who have lost loved ones, bring healing to those who have been injured. We pray for the government as they clear the area and begin to rebuild the communities which have suffered so much destruction. We pray for those in need in our churches and communities. Bring healing and wholeness to them. Let them know that they have met with the living God. Amen. Our closing hymn is Hear the call of the kingdom, lift your eyes to the king. Let his song rise within you as a fragrant offering. Shall we sing? the good news of the kingdom and calls us to follow him. Let us say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining with us today. 
There will be a service next Sunday at 10.30 and keep safe. God bless and goodbye.